congratulations to the Regina Pats, who hold the first overall pick in the 2020 WHL Bantam Draft. If, if for some reason he, he was somehow at some point available, then, then of course it would be something that you know, we, would, we would have you know, high interest. If you were to tell me that we'd be in this situation two years ago, I would have asked if you've taken your meds, but I digress, here we are. The Bedard trade rumors are in full motion, and personally, I believe he's got every right to request a trade out of the Pats program. What has this team provided him over the last two seasons that's actually proved beneficial to the Pats franchise? They dealt away promising players like Sloan Stanek. They expected an 0-4 born goalie to be the backbone to a team with a weak defensive core. They failed to draw commitments from their off the board picks from the CHL import draft. And then reoccurring injuries to major players like Zach Stringer kept extinguishing the hope of making a push throughout the season. Sure, guys like Tanner Howe made an impact and Riker Evans looks like a legit caliber prospect for the Seattle Kraken. But this core isn't built to take a team into the postseason. In fact, Connor Bedard is the first exceptional status player to miss the playoffs in their first two seasons. And can it with the shortened season? There were no playoffs in general, but guess what? I don't care. Bedard on his own though, has put up numbers unlike anything we've ever seen from an exceptional status player in their first two seasons. In fact, in terms of his pure involvement on the team, He's nearly chipped in on 50% of the team's goals over the last two seasons, taking away those games where he was not involved due to his appearances with the U18 and U20 national teams. Compare that to other notable exceptional status players, and you have a considerable gap. And after two seasons where you've done literally everything in your power to give the team a fighting chance for the postseason, I can see where frustration sets in. And Bedard isn't a quitter, this isn't a Kevin Durant situation or a Kyrie Irving where one minor inconvenience sends him off scouring for a new team to leech off of. This is justified. And since this will most definitely be Bedard's final season in junior hockey, it's fair to say he wants to play for a team that can actually compete and not just expect him to take control of the helm. I was originally going to make a video called The Theoretical Success of the Regina Pats, laying out the theoretical roster the team could possess if the Pats could persuade certain import players and NCAA commits to come play alongside Bedard. But I'm through with that, like I don't believe in it anymore. I'm not going to make a video that's not going to matter in a few months time. So instead of that, let's look at some possible locations for Bedard to bring his talent to. I've got a few off the top of my head. But there's one of them that I really do not want to happen. Because not only would it reflect poorly on the Regina Pats, but on the WHL as a whole. Option number one for Bedard, and I'd consider it the easy route. The 2023 Memorial Cup hosts, the Kamloops Blazers. The Blazers should be a competitive team next season as well, and the possible addition of a player like Bedard would completely bolster this roster to the absolute breaking point. The team may be going through a slight growing phase though, as CHL goaltender of the year Dylan Garand is expected to make his transition to the pro stage in the AHL, and local hometown hero Logan Stankovan will most likely be pushing for a spot with the Dallas Stars after being named CHL player of the year. But fear not. Those two have created a terrific culture in the Blazers organization, and if both were to part ways, there'd still be some recognizable talent to play with. 2022 draftees Fraser Minton, Mats Lindgren, and Matthew Semenoff are bound to be a solid core for the team and keep the ball rolling through the 2022-23 season. In addition, Connor Levis and Caden Hamill are two promising 2023 eligibles, and the possible overager core of Dalen Kiefler, Ethan Branwood, and a wildcard player that will most likely be an acquisition would easily supply the team with a strong foundation. For the Blazers to acquire a player like Bedard without sacrificing the roster, we can somewhat base a theoretical trade off of previous exceptional status players, such as John Tavares or Joe Valeno, where exorbitant amounts had to be exchanged. A Bedard trade here wouldn't be cheap. I'd expect at least three, four, maybe even five high-end draft picks, along with a blue chip prospect in there. For the Blazers, I'd imagine that'd have to be a guy like Ashton Tate, Jesse Sanch, or Nathan Bem. But seriously, <laughs> why would you not do this if you were guaranteed a trip to the Memorial Cup? When's the next time you're gonna be in the event? 
let alone host it. Some more reasons Bedard may want to come to the River City. If Stankovan returns to the Blazers, the two were line mates on that prolific 2021 U18 roster that won gold. The two connected very well to say the least. Another reason? Although this is a massive stretch, from what I can gather, Bedard does have family from Kamloops. And I'm sorry if I butchered this name, but Troy Ofukani. Ofukani? Afu Ofukani? Ofukani? Is Bedard's only listed relative on Elite Prospects, and he is from Kamloops. Take that for what it is, as I have no further info regarding that matter. It seems like a proper fit if Bedard wants to take the so-called easy street, but the next team on the list could be an absolute wagon as well. And if they land Bedard and possibly get the commitment from one other player, ladies and gentlemen, the Seattle Thunderbirds could be absolutely insane. <laughs> To say the Thunderbirds are going to be stacked next season is an understatement. This is a team that is going to be potent. They may be losing some important overagers like Lukas Vekovsky and Henrik Rubinsky, but the talent that will be filling in their roles is absolutely mental. 2022 draftees Jordan Gustafsson, Reed Schaefer, Kevin Korczynski, and Thomas Milic should all have the league by the balls next season if everyone remains healthy. The one player that could be a vital catalyst to be side Bedard in the best possible situation has got to be Brad Lambert, who recently had his CHL rights traded from Saskatoon to Seattle. This is unlikely, but imagine the pressure on someone like Lambert to come to the CHL when you have the chance to create one of the best rosters the league has ever seen. Just like Kamloops, it'd be a hefty price to bring Bedard across the border. Your future would have to be sacrificed. And you don't have the same security that Kamloops has. But head to head, I'd take a Seattle team with Bedard over a Bedardless Blazers team. Now this third option. Where else in the WHL could Bedard land? Edmonton, Winnipeg, Moose Jaw, Vancouver? No. In fact, this next team isn't even in the WHL. It's not even on this continent. Why though? Why ditch your home country? Why leave the league that gave you the opportunity to play as a 15 year old? Simply put, the competition. If you don't remember, during the 2020 season, in order to get extra ice time during the pandemic, Bedard shipped off to Sweden to play some games with HV71's J18 and J20 roster. That was at the age of 15, and by the start of next season, Bedard will be 17, so I don't think there'd be an issue with confidence or maturity in terms of leaving his home country. I honestly see this as an option for Bedard to really enhance his game to the next level, as he can easily already be an impact player at the pro level in Sweden. Compared to what Austin Matthews did in his draft eligible season, where instead of taking the college route, he simply turned pro in Switzerland, where he played for Zurich and posted one of the best seasons the league has ever seen. Could Bedard post a similar feat in the SHL? Quite possibly. The best draft eligible season ever posted in the SHL was in 1999, where the one and only Daniel Sedin posted 42 points in 50 games alongside his brother Henrik with Moto. And in more recent years, you have Elias Lindholm's draft eligible season with Brinas where he tallied 30 points in 48 games. You also have Nicholas Backstrom's where he posted 26 points in 46 games. Now it could just be me, but I feel Bedard could slaughter this record if he decides to play pro in Sweden. The skill set he possesses at this stage in his career far outweighs any of those previously mentioned players. Which is something coming from me, because I will defend the Sedins to my grave. Bedard's blend of skill is simply outmatched. He's got a shot miles ahead of any of those players. I'd argue it's even better than some of those players' shots while they are in their prime. His playmaking is on par if not slightly better than a portion of those guys, and his skating, although he doesn't abuse his speed like many other prospects do nowadays, he can still leave defenders in the dust with incredible agility and magnificent athleticism. Honestly, the SHL could be a terrific option for Bedard, especially with his prior experience in Sweden, but the image this leaves on the Regina Pats, the WHL, and ultimately the CHL would be catastrophic. Here's one of the best prospects of our generation, and you couldn't provide him an environment for him to succeed so he flees the country? Looks pretty bad. Also, you gotta think of it from Regina's point of view. You receive nothing. At least losing him to Kamloops, Seattle, or whoever guarantees some form of compensation and secures the future for a long while. Think of it this way. If the WHL's lone player they have ever granted exceptional status to decides to flee the league because the team he was selected to doesn't know how to build a team surrounding him, 
it'll look atrocious on the league's behalf. In that case, I personally see a Bedard move on the horizon. It could be an off-season move, or it could be a mid-season move mirroring what happened to Tavares and Valeno. What do you think? I don't know if I've opened up a big can of worms here, but the discussion has been happening, and as much as it's been downplayed as of late, I know there's stuff going on behind the scenes. You're telling me the Memorial Cup hosts aren't going to make a push to secure the league's best player in his most likely final season in junior, or that the possible biggest threat in the league isn't salivating at the chance to construct the ultimate roster. I don't think so, and I think something will happen sooner than we imagine. Thanks for watching.